Like a broken spear reaching high into the sky, the Arkenspire is a black reminder of a time when Sarah walked the world and her wretched followers waged war on the living. Where it was once a glowing tower lancing into the heavens, filled with the loyal minions of the Lich Queen, it is now home of vagrants, unmentionables, tramps, and other monstrosities. In the age gone by, it was a symbol of how the hardest battles Aritica ever suffered were because of the trials and tribulations of powerful beings from above as much as below. The undying demi-goddess of dark magic and her manipulative, flesh-shaping offspring, Kretch, were instrumental in the erection of the Arkenspire. It is said that they used its unique architecture to stitch together the world of mortals and the Arkenhold, the shadowy plenar prism realm that holds the demand spirits yet to fully leave life or find rest in death. If the two realms are anchored to one another by spiritually powerful locations, like knots between two ropes, the Arkenspire would be akin to a braid. For the last several months, there's been far more noticeable activity in the dreary land surrounding Arkenspire. Throngs of monsters and unscrupulous things have begun to gather near its towering immensity, and all those who live in or around its shadow have turned their attention on survival. The people of Aritica are no strangers to conflict, especially the inhabitants of Nethermore, and threats from the creatures of the land. But even the dullest among them can tell when the natural order of things has been upset, and the dark places of that much deeper. Something both great and terrible is happening, and it is somehow based around the Arkenspire. This is why once again your deeds have placed you in the fateful path of wondrous, life-changing things. So both Barrett and I have not finished the base campaign, so we'll just continue moving forward. The Arkenspire's recent flare of activity has many adventurous souls, including yourself, trotting the muddy flats between the city of men, bury folk, and even elves, so long as no one treks too close to the Nethermore. Only the bravest and most curious heroes tighten their cloaks to fend off the supernatural cold that rolls in from the land of the vile. A cold, frankly, that you can feel all too deeply at this exact moment. How far have you wandered from the main road? When did you last see the signs of the Vejariel? Oh hells, all nine of them. Did you cross the Black Peat border? So now what we need to do is pick out our heroes and then do a test of our willpower. And if at least half of us pass, we'll go to 001. Otherwise, we'll go to 002. Berndt is going to be playing Van Geyser for our campaign. He has a willpower of two. Let's go ahead and roll two dice. We'll give him a roll. And we have two successes and a burst. So that means we can roll in another one. And we have a total of three successes. So he has passed. I'll be playing Willow Banks, the bard of the group. I also have willpower of two. Let's give our two dice a roll, and I have only one success, so that means I technically failed. Since half of us succeeded rounding up, we'll go ahead and move to 001, and I'm assuming I get to claim a focus. It doesn't take too many retraced steps and retaken turns, but you find your way back to the main path, as it can scarcely be called a road, and you navigate the rest of the evening well enough to stay out of the moors of the Black Peat. Too many dangerous things lurk in that horrid place, and there would be no way you could sleep the whole night through. Here, however, this will be a good place to set up camp. We can either now choose to push on a little farther up the path, just to be sure before making camp, or we can just go ahead and settle in for the night and get a full night's rest. I think let's go ahead and push on a little further up the path, just to be sure before making camp. It was worth the effort moving farther away from the edge of the Black Peat. A nice dry campsite for a few hours less sleep is better than trying to sleep all through the night on the wet bog surrounded by nightmares. So we're going to gain a card from the campaign pool called Well Rested. We'll add it to our journal. This card states here, after setting up the next quest or encounter, each hero gains one focus. Then return this card to the story deck. Great, so we'll each start with one focus. The breaking sun slices through the morning fog like a mithril blade, prying open your eyes as easily as a pair of rusted hinges. After stretching sore muscles and packing up everything you can from the site, it's time to move on to the roadhouse of Velrir. Velrir, built by a coalition of local elder races, is a kind of sprawling stone structure halfway between a fortress and a hostel that has served for centuries as a way station for adventurers heading to the Arkenspire. 
It is normally dotted with the steeds and wagons from travelers coming through the area, but as you approach, you know something is wrong. Clouds of buzzing carrion flies swarm over the corpses of horses and their fallen defenders, and the heavy oaken door of Evelhir lay in splinters in the front landing. The entrance lies open, ringed with shards of shattered door and yawnings like the maw of a beast. There are footprints, the bloody footprints of an old man, that flee at a running pace into the darkness, as well as the claw-toed tracks of what went in after him. Chapter 1 Weapons drawn, you step into the yawning entrance of the Velrir. There were once tables and chairs arranged in large public hall that welcomed dozens of Elvenai, Krazak, and Burry folk, and other Aridikins. Now, however, it is a little more than a mess of broken furniture, splashes of split stew mixed with blood and a few scattered weapons, as well as the dancing shadows from a flickering fire in the hearth. Slowly turning in place, just a few steps inside of this historic building, your eyes adjust to the erratic darkness and take in every nook and cranny. A savage battle took place here, and, telling from the thick globs of cool stew and half coagulated gore not too long ago, something came through here and spared nothing the touch of their weapons. Even with all the signs of a brutal raid, there seems to be no bodies of neither attacker nor defender. Whoever came out on top in this conflict not only took everyone involved captive, but they also claimed the casualties from both sides. A large pair of double doors the way down into the cellar rooms of an ancient verrier stand ajar. Slimy, smeared prints of some kind mar the brass edging on the huge wooden slabs, and a clear set of human footprints in the dirt and filth on the threshold lead down the granite stairs into the darkness below. There was at least one survivor from this devastation, it seems, and they fled down below. There has to be clues as to who did this and why, but is there really time to search for them? <laughs> so we have first perform the first two steps of normal game setup, then choose one of the following. Take the time to search the room for clues, or no time to drag your feet, someone needs your help, rush down to the lower floor. I always feel like getting clues is helpful. It might hurt us in the game, but maybe in the actual campaign it'll help us. So let's go to 007. You spread out, looking for anything that might help you figure out who and what attacked here and why. Picking up debris, brushing walls, covering aside, and, f and writing tables that have been toppled. You go over the entire room. You're about to give up on the search and head below when a strange thunk sound echoes out from inside the pantry behind the bar. Preparing for battle, you knock aside the thin pantry door to reveal a young, as far as you can tell, Krizak Lass doing her best to cradle a wounded arm in a makeshift bandage. Please don't hurt, she cringes, expecting the worst. Seeing that you are not the attackers from before, she steps out and points at a kitchen knife, still slick from reddish ichor, toward the double doors leading to the cellar rooms. The old sage, the one from Luxon, he ran downstairs, but they were right behind him. The knife started to quiver and her head lowered slightly. I should have tried to help him, but, but, she swallowed back her shame. You need to go save him. He's just an old man. Here, take this. Add a potion of healing search card to the journal. Oh, nice. That means we'll get to start the game with this consumable that someone can use. Uh, choose a character within range to heal 3 damage. The many rooms under the Valrir lay out before you like cobblestones on a mysterious road, torches lighting most of the area you can see while casting shadows into what which you cannot. You can hear the edges of beastly sounds echoing down the halls and behind the doors, some sounding much closer than others. Then you hear another sound cut through all the rest. No! A raspy man's voice shouts from somewhere deep in the Valrir. Get back, you altar-licking, lich-loving bottom feeders! No time to waste. We're going to set up our first quest, the rescue. We have our threat deck. We can choose any but the profaned. And our villain, we can choose any but the Nathander. Ne These are ones that came with this Arkenspire expansion. Uh, we are going to replace the prisoner ally with Hugh. Uh, if you've played the base campaign, I've started, I haven't finished, but if you've played it, you might know Hugh. <laughs> uh, so we're going to grab Hugh that we are going to be trying to save. Here we have our quest, The Rescue. I'm not going to read the flavor text because we understand what we're doing from the campaign itself. Setup. Remove each objective card from the quest deck and randomly place one objective card in each hero's threat area. Remove the rest from the game. Here we have the four objective cards. I'm going to randomly shuffle them up and give one to Baron and one to myself. Barent is going to have the altar bound shard, and I'm going to have distract the guards. These are going to be placed into our threat areas. Next, we need to remove the prisoner, but instead of the prisoner, we're going to use Hugh uh, from the quest deck and place it in the villain, villain play area. So Hugh is in the villain play area. 
We're then going to remove each shackle card from the quest deck, and these look like this. They say shackle on them. I'm going to shuffle them up and reveal one and put it adjacent or uh, adjacent attached to Hugh. So we're going to pick this one. This one is the subtle disarming. The rest of these cards I'm simply going to place at the side of the table. If we end up needing another one, we'll draw from that deck. Finally, I need to grab the cell quest card here, and I'm going to take three other random ones from the remainder of the quest cards. There'll be eight of them, uh, and I'm going to place them at the bottom of the quest deck. So we're going to have to get to at least the second set of four feature cards before we can actually find the cell where they've placed Hugh. If a hero controls Hugh and its token is adjacent to the altar and at least one hero with no enemies in the room, the heroes have won the game. So that's what we need to do. We need to find the altar. We need to find the cell, break free Hugh, run back to where the altar is, make sure he's adjacent and a hero with no enemies. Boom, we win the game. If Hugh is defeated, we have to place him on uh, place him back on his card, and his card will stay in the villain area, and we'll have to place another shackles card on him, and we'll have to try and de-shackle him again. While there are objective cards in play, heroes cannot perform the interact on the shackle cards. So we need to do the things that are on those threat cards first before we can actually break Hugh free. This will then start our quest threat area, and it has this activate. I also randomly chose an altar already. We're going to use the scorched altar. So these two are in the quest threat area. The villain we're going to be playing against is Morgan. So Morgan, this has a setup here that says when creating the supply of focus, return all but 10 focus because there's two heroes here to the box. So we only have a total of 10 focus. She's going to try and steal our focus and you'll see how that works over here. And it says here, anytime the heroes must place a focus on a new mass card and none remain in the supply, a hero or heroes must discard the required amount of focus in order to place it. So we have to actually lose our own focus for that. We're also going to play against one of the harder minion sets or threat decks, the Bray. Uh, I think they are really fun. They're a good challenge. Finally, we're playing with a slight variant. There's actually going to be two variants that we're going to play with. One is we're going to start off with a villain or an enemy upgraded card. You can see this here, enemy upgrade card. I've randomly chosen the Sinister Enchantments. So this says each time a minion spawns, so that's even if it's from the Lurker deck or from the threat deck, they're going to gain one armor token. And each time a rival, we don't have a rival, each time a villain spawns, it gains two armor tokens. So when Morgan does come out, she'll have two armor tokens. The other thing we're going to do, because uh, we find it being a little bit more fun and a little bit more of a challenge, whenever we have to draw threats when we reveal a room, we're going to draw threats plus one. So we're going to draw three cards instead of two, just to add a little bit more of a challenge, uh, because we find it's the right amount, at least from what we've done so far. Just like normal, I've taken seven random feature cards. There are two that are in the Ark Inspire expansion that have also potentially been included in these seven. And I'm grabbing the Altar Found card for a total of eight. I will shuffle these together. This specifically does not state from the quest card that I need to place it at the bottom of the deck like some of the quests do. I'm just going to shuffle it in there. Here we have the character I'm playing, Willow Banks. Now, Willow uses a specific type of token that you won't see unless you're playing with Willow, and that is the Melody token. These Melody tokens can be used in two different ways. One, I can give them to myself or another character, and we can use them as any rune symbol type that we would like. So if I wanted to use the ability here to exhaust water, and there wasn't any water in the altar pool, I could use this as a water symbol. Pretty cool. I can also give that to Van Geyser and he can do the same thing. Conversely, I can actually give the enemies these melody tokens as well. They're going to let me exhaust the minions. It's also going to, if the minion would use an altar die, it won't and instead will discard one of the melody tokens. I have a total of 12 of these in the supply and they are super fun. <laughs> so my two equipment that I start off with, I've got my Burry Loot here. I can take an action to test my charisma, which actually is my best stat. For each uh, success, we can place one melody token on an enemy card or a hero card. That's within the range of five. And then, of course, I can exhaust this with water to choose a hero within range to gain two focus. That's pretty awesome. I do have a weapon. I attack with my agility, which is two. I can also exhaust this with a wind to deal one damage to an enemy that's within range. I'll go ahead and draw four cards. I have the Rousing Finale. I have a Merry Minstrel. I have a Song of Violent Valor. And my final one, I have Inspiring Chorus. And I think I'm going to go ahead and mulligan the Rousing Finale, and I will just drop one more. I've got a Merry Minstrel. 
Then what I'll do is I'll put this card and shuffle it back into my deck. And remember, I took out all of the yellow colored cards, so the cards that have a yellow uh, line like this, those are your upgraded cards. We'll earn those during this campaign. It's part of the reason why I wanted to show you the campaign. Over here we have Van Geyser. I'm also going to have Van Geyser start with the Potion of Healing. I'll place that over here. Van Geyser is all about bounties. It's really fun. The bottom of all of his cards of his deck, uh, generally, not all of them, but most of them are actually bounties that you can place on enemies. And then we gain benefits on them either by when we defeat them or maybe it makes us e easier to defeat them. Pretty cool. He's got two swords as his equipment. So this one lets him attack with his strength, which is, or I should say might, which is two. This one attacks with the agility, which is two. They each can exhaust to do different effects. He also can exhaust here to move up to two spaces. And then you may attach a bounty card from your hand to an enemy within range. Also really cool. So Berndt will go ahead and draw the Persistent Tracker for one. And then for number two, we have the Elder Grit. Oh, that's great for healing. Uh, we've got the Discerning of the Prey for number three. And then for our fourth one, we've got uh, Steern Clairvoyance. And I think he's going to keep all four of those. Let's then give our Altar Dice a roll. We've got some Shadow, a couple Light, and a Fire. Bernd and I have decided we're going to start off in the same room as our last playthrough. Seems to make sense. We are running down the stairs. I think I... Oh, look at how tiny I am. <laughs> I think I'm going to start right here. And Bernd, who's about four times the size of me. Yeah, I love him with those swords. He's going to be right here. Let's go ahead and start the game. Bernd, I think you should start us. Let's do it. Sadly, this time, Colin, I don't have my cat, but I'm still <laughs> going to go charging through that door. We're going to go ahead and do a move action first, which means I can move three squares. One, two, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and open that door. Whenever you reveal a room, first thing you do is reveal a feature card, and we have a bookshelf. Nice. We like the bookshelf. When you're adjacent to the bookshelf, during the quest part of the phase, a hero adjacent to this feature can draw a card. You can also do an interact and do a search, which is also great, and it can help people draw a card. Our next card we need to draw is our quest card, and we have the torture room. That sounds glorious, so it's, <laughs> yeah, it sounds terrible. Dying lanterns cast grasping shadows across the gruesome display. Much blood has been shed in these confines already, and screams of anguish, no doubt. Instruments of torture litter the room, along with various remains of once living things. Oh gosh, that's terrible. Thoughts of torture being visited upon the one you seek are hard to put to rest, but they will not serve anyone now. What's done is done, and daylight awaits. When revealed, if Hugh is not on the board, he's not. Deal one damage to Hugh. Hugh will have a total of six health remaining. He has seven in total, so he'll have six health remaining. We don't have to do the second part because no one controls the prisoner. So let's go ahead now and draw our threat cards. And remember, we're drawing threat cards plus one. So normally you'd only draw two. We're going to draw three. The first threat card will be for Berndt, and he has the fire spray. This is a trap. Uh, when you get within one space of it, it's going to trigger. Suffer one damage and place one threat token on this room's feature card. You'll see what that means in a bit. You can interact with this and task with your willpower, and we have to get four su successes to get rid of it. So this will be placed in his threat area. The second one will be for me. I will have a Bray Moltenite. Now this one has two armor, but because of the sinister enchantments, he's going to come in with one armor token. And then our third one, will be for Berndt, and he will have a Bray Flame Shaper, and this one also will come in with one armor token. First, we're going to go ahead and place out our feature, which is the bookcase. Then we've got our trap, which is right here. This trap is going to be placed adjacent to this feature and as close as it can to me, which means it's only one square away. Ah, oh, that's not too good. Next, we're going to go ahead and place the Molten Knight that Colin drew right here. And then my Flame Shaper is going to go adjacent to that as well. Now that we have our room populated, let's continue. Since that trap is right in front of us, I wanted to stop my movement before we get to it because I have Stern Clairvoyance, which has a range of four and as a reaction, so this is not actually an action. It says, play this card after a trap is placed, and we just did that, on the board. Choose a hero within range to move up to three spaces, ignoring the trigger effect. Then, that hero may place two progress on an adjacent trap. So our Fire Spray is going to gain two of these progress tokens. There's only two more left to get rid of it. So our Stern Clairvoyance does give us the ability to move. Now, of course, I do have to end next to that Flame Spray in order to be able to place those two progress. So we're going to go ahead and stop right there. We're next to the Bookshelf, the Flame Spray, and check this out. We're going to be able to also attack our enemy. 
Now that we have finished that, I'm going to go ahead and use the bottom part here, taking our altar die with darkness and be able to give myself a focus. Now, sadly, Colin is not in range, so he can't gain the focus, but at least I get one focus. And then we're going to go ahead and discard our card. So we're going to go ahead and re-roll that die and we have fire. Oh, that's terrible because guess who likes fire? All the bad guys. And of course, I am going to gain that one focus, bringing myself to two. For my second action, I'm going to go ahead and interact with this flame spray. And to do that, I need to test my will. Now, of course, we have a will of two. So we're going to go ahead, roll our two dice and see how things go. Well, check it out. We got a success and we also got at least one focus that I can spend. But then I'm also going to gain one back. So we did get our two successes, bringing ourselves to four. Having completed the trap, we do get to take one supply. So that was a really good turn. Before we go to the board and take out the trap, I do want to play this card as well. It's called Discerning the Prey. I can go ahead and test my intellect, and for each success, I'm going to reveal the top card of my deck. And for each bounty card revealed, I can attach that to an enemy within range, which is four. Shuffle each of the other revealed cards back in your deck. Now, sadly, we don't have water, so I can't do the bottom part of this card, but I still think it's going to be awesome. Now, my horse's intellect is two. He's a pretty smart horse, kind of like Mr. Ed. We're going to go ahead and roll these up and see how we do. Oh, check it out. We got two bursts. We're going to go ahead and roll a couple more. These are all awesome successes. I love it. All right. We got a total of one, two, three, four, and we're still rolling more. Here we go. Okay, that's awesome. We get two focus and four successes. We had a monstrous roll, and for that, I'm going to get my two focus tokens. Then I get to draw the top four cards of my deck, and for each bounty revealed, we get to go ahead and put that on it. Of course, we started without one, but that's okay. I'm sure there's got to be one in here. Nope, so far we're batting on zero. All right, here we go. We've got a bounty. I can attach this card to an enemy within range and reduce the attached enemy's defense by a value of one, and that's a full range. That's going to be awesome. And then, oh, look at that. We got two of them. That's going to be amazing. Now, I don't think our flame shaper has much defense, but that's okay. If we can put these on, that's going to be awesome. So we're going to take the two that didn't have any bounties on them and shuffle them back in our deck. And after looking more at it, we realize that the Multinator has two defense. So we're going to stick both of these on it, bringing its defense to zero. We're going to go ahead and remove our flame spray from the board. And then since we don't really have any other cards that are going to attack, I'm just going to go ahead and use our swords to see how badly we can damage our enemy that I'm adjacent to. Now, before we actually make the attack, I do want to actually activate both of my swords, Dawn's Edge and Dustfall. Just in the rare instance, I may roll a million bursts and killer before we can activate these swords. The reason I'm doing that is because I can exhaust this sword and this to be able to deal one damage to an enemy within range. And then I can change one other altar dice to our darkness symbol. And then we're going to be able to go over with Dustfall and do pretty much the same thing, exhausting this die and turning this one to light. That way we get rid of both the fire, which is absolutely bad news for us, and we've done two damage to our Flame Shaper. We do have to go ahead and re-roll those two altar dice that we use. So we, oh no, we got our fire back. Well, that's okay. One's better than two. Now, of course, our brave flame shaper did take two damage, but she still is going to keep that armor because the damage is actually just dealing damage. Now, at this point, I can choose to either attack with Dawn Edge or Dustfall, and both of them, I have a two in the stat, so it's not really going to matter too much. So I like the name Dawn's Edge better. We're going to attack with that sword. So I get my two dice, which is going to be using my might skill. And we're going to roll them up, and I, well, it wasn't as good as we did for the other roll, but that's okay. We got a focus and a hit, so at this point, I'm doing nothing because she has the armor. So we're going to go ahead and use the focus to actually remove this token and at least deal one damage. Hopefully, we can have the bard come in and take this person out. Since it's now the end of my turn, I'm going to go ahead and draw a card, and we have found Persistent Tracker, which is going to be pretty awesome. Moving to my turn, first thing I'm going to do is play a Feat card. Now, this is something that we did wrong in the last playthrough, so I want to call this out. You can only play Feat cards during your turn. You can play them, they're not in action, but you can only play them during your turn. So I'm going to play this one. I'm going to test my Charisma, which is three. For each success, you may place one Melody Token on a Hero Character card or an Enemy card. Sweet. I also have here, and I'm going to exhaust this earth to choose a hero to perform an action. I'm going to go ahead and have Van Geyser do an action after I do my test. I'll roll my three dice and that one altar die. Let's see what we get. Wow, one success and two focus. I have two focus. I really want melody tokens. How many mel melody tokens do I want? I really want it a lot. Uh, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend both focus so I can get three melody tokens. If you look here, there is no range on this card. Since I'm playing this card, uh, playing my loot, I'm able to give those melody tokens to anyone. 
This means I'm going to give two melody tokens to myself, and I'm going to give one over to Bernd. Thanks, Colin, for giving me an action. I'm going to go ahead and use our supply since you gave me an awesome action. And on this time, we're going to use Dustfall since Dawn's Edge didn't actually do as well as I was hoping. This one attacks with agility. I only have two agility, but using that supply gives us that extra die. So let's go ahead and roll these up and get some good numbers. Now, I could use two focus to kill off this character that we're fighting, but I don't want to do that. We are going to use one, though, to give our Flame Shaper three damage. I am going to take back this focus from over here, and then I'm going to go ahead and exhaust Van Geyser. Van Geyser down here has an exhaust ability where he can move up to two spaces, and then I may attach a bounty card from your hand to the enemy within range. And I've got an awesome card right here to attach. I'm going to attach Persistent Tracker to our Flame Shaper that only has one health. And when I attach this card to the enemy in the room, after the attached enemy is defeated, we have to gain one additional supply. And now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and reroll our Alter Die and hopefully not see fire always oh, fire. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to exhaust my Bury Loot. Here's the thing. I need water. We, of course, keep rolling fire, thanks, Baron, to not water. So I'm going to use a Melody token for this. But I can choose a hero within range. I'm going to choose myself since I don't have any focus, and I'm going to gain two focus for that. Then I'll discard this Melody token. I'll now spend my first action to move three. One, two, three. I'm going to jump into this room, hanging out with Baron. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to exhaust my Willow's Slingshot here. I'm going to have to use my second melody token to be able to do this. I can deal one damage to an enemy within range. One damage, just enough to take out the flame shaper. Now remember, when we take out that flame shaper, normally we get one supply, but because of the bounty that Baron put on it, we're going to gain two supply. So we went from no supply to two supply. Sweet. We'll remove that flame shaper from the board. Let's see, what do I want to do for my second action? Next, I'm going to play my Inspiring Chorus for action two. I can choose a hero within range. That hero may move up to three spaces and gain one melody token. I think I'm going to have Van Geyser do that, but I'm also going to use the light here to have each hero within range, which includes myself, gain one armor token. So now we each have one armor token. We'll reroll that altar die and we get some more light. Thanks to Colin, I now have two melody tokens, and I'm sure people have already figured out that Colin really didn't have to do this. I should have been able to move two squares when I exhausted him, but I failed to do that, so Colin saved me and has allowed me to move one square closer to our enemy. I've done this once already. Let's go ahead and do it again. Let's have another Merry Minstrel. And did you guys notice in this art? Look, Baron is here listening to my music. It's so awesome. Okay, we're going to test our charisma again, which is three. For each success, you may place one melody token on a hero, uh, character card, or an enemy card. Then I'm hoping that I at least get one of those so I can use one as an earth, since we can't seem to roll earth, and choose a hero to perform an action. I'll give my dice a roll here, and we have two successes and one focus. Let's go ahead and use one focus here. So I'm going to gain three melody tokens. I'm going to give all three to myself because I use them the most. I will discard one then immediately to be able to use this second effect to choose a hero to perform an action. And you know who it's going to be. It's going to be Baird. With the action Colin is giving me, because he's such a nice guy, I'm going to go ahead and use Dawn's Edge. It did okay. We're going to hopefully do it again. I am going to use one of our supply to go ahead and grab our third die. Now, of course, we do have two supply, but you can only ever use one at a time. So I'm going to roll my three dice and see what we get. Come on, bursts. Well, that wasn't exactly the roll I was hoping for, but that's okay. We're going to use one of our focus tokens, bringing us to three successes. And so that's going to remove his armor token, and he's going to gain two damage. Remember, we have a two bounties on there that are nullifying all of his armor. Oh, these bounties are absolutely amazing. For my final action, I'm going to use my slingshot. David against Goliath here. I'm a teeny tiny little bard chucking <laughs> a rock at this huge Multanite. I am also going to use a supply. Normally, my agility is two, so I'm going to roll three dice for this attack. I'm looking for, I need four successes, so I need a burst here if I can. And I'm going to roll all of those off. So let me re-roll these two in. I've got a burst. So that's three successes. I need one more to take them out. Oh, that's a focus, but I have one focus left. One, two, three, four. That is four successes. Just what we need. He's got two damage on him. Four. He's done. That's going to get us this supply back. And he's off the board, so no threats will activate. I've completed my turn, so I'll go ahead and draw a card. And I have the Braving the Dark. Now, that's what you call cleaning house. Look at that. Three threats all taken care of right before the threats activate. I am not a sad person. We'll now move to the threat phase of the turn, and we have Baron here. He's going to have to test his agility. If he gets two successes, he's good. If he fails, though, he has to place one search token on his room's feature card. 
For me, all I'm going to do is place one quest token on this card. Then if there are three or more on here, I'm going to discard those three and I'm going to draw one lurker card. We're going to go ahead and test our agility. Rolling two dice. Come on, we need two successes. Oh, we got a burst and a success, which means we're gold. Now we're almost looking for some of those focus tokens. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and take one of those. Boom. Now we'll move to the villain phase, and you can see here, activate. Place one focus on a new mask card. Can't do that. If unable, each hero discards one focus. I don't have any. Unfortunately, Barrett has three, so he's going to have to discard one. He now has two. But I just got that focus token. <laughs> and it's gone. It's gone. Uh, there's no water. You can see here in our altar pool, we have no water. Thank goodness. So that's not going to happen. Hugh doesn't have any effect right now because he's not in play. So then we're just going to draw our Mor Morgan's first card. And it says each hero must either move one of their focus to a new mass card, or we have to resist with our fortitude five. Each focus gained during this test must be placed on a new mass card instead. So there's no new mass card at all. So I think we can ignore that part, but we have to do a resist five. For any amount that we don't succeed on that resist of five, we take as damage. Even in though we each have one armor, or actually, yeah, we both have one armor. Even though we have that armor, it's not going to help us. Resist goes through your armor. Our horse is going to go ahead and roll first. He's going to see how he does. Now, of course, this is his best stat. He's got three. He's going to roll him up, and he's got a burst, and that's good stuff. We're going to see what we get next. Oh, we got another burst. Oh, this guy's on fire. Well, actually, I hope he's not on fire. One, two, three, four, five. We got our five successes, so I'm also going to gain a focus token. That's going to be awesome. Thanks a lot, Colin. Now, unfortunately for the bard, fortitude is only a two. Yeah, so let's see how well I can do on this. I'll roll. Oh, I've got a burst. I'll take that. Love bursting dice. Okay, so I only have two successes. That means I'm going to take three direct damage. I only have 10 health, you guys, so that puts me down to seven, but I will gain two focus, which is nice because I had none. So I've gone back to two focus. Finally, we'll go to the quest phase. This activate states that if a hero controls Hugh, which no one has, uh, has control of Hugh, then we have the Scorched Altar here. Each hero may discard one focus to change an altar die to a result of their choice, and we're both going to do that. We'll each discard one focus, changing the two fire that we have in the altar pool. We're going to change one to earth and one to wind. Now that means when we look at the bottom here, each figure suffers one damage if there was fire in the altar pool. There isn't. <laughs> so that's the advantage of doing that. We're pretty sure you can do that. It makes the most sense. Finally, we have our bookshelf. And right now, Berndt is adjacent to the bookshelf. That means each, uh, it says a hero, not each, a hero adjacent to this feature may draw a card. So he will draw the stern clairvoyance. That'll end our first round of the campaign. Let's go ahead and start round two. Going into round two, we have decided that I am going to go first yet again, just because I've got two giant swords, and besides, I'm bigger than she is. I'm going to go ahead and use my first action to be super triumphant, and I'm just going to search the bookshelf. Don't forget that Berndt has the altar bound shard, and this says each time you search, you may discard up to two successes to place one progress token on this card for each success you discard. He needs a total of six to get rid of this. Since he's doing that search, he's doing it as an interact with the bookshelf. So he's going to be searching with his intelligence. For each supply gained during this test, choose a hero uh, that's in this room to draw a card. Oh, that's a great ability too. Now remember, Mr. Ed has only an intelligence of two. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of our supplies to gain our third one. And I know his name's not Mr. Ed, but it's fun to say. We're going to go ahead and roll our three dice and see how it goes. We got a total of two successes. And I think I will go ahead and use that focus token to get us three because this seems like a really good thing to search. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and grab our card from searching. And we have found an improvised shield. Gain two armor tokens and discard this card. That's perfect for me because I'm a lot of the time in the action. So here are my two armor tokens. I'll put them on my guy, giving me a total of three. Now, I know we talked about the altar bound shard that I should probably be working towards, but this is a really good thing to search. We're actually just going to go ahead and take the two supply. And then we also get to draw each draw a card as well. And the card I got is Road Warden. And Colin is going to go ahead and gain Lingering Melody. And since we successfully searched the bookshelf, we are going to go ahead and place a token on it, making it a little bit harder to search next time. For our second action, I'm going to go ahead and just move. And that's going to be able to let us reveal a new room. I'm going to move one over here, revealing that room. Thank you, Colin. The feature card that we have found will be a cage. This has an activate. A hero adjacent to this feature may reveal the top card of the threat deck and then place it on top or bottom of the deck. We also have a really cool interact here. I hope we get to do that during the game. 
Next is our quest card, and we have Sudden Panic. Sudden Panic overcomes the prisoner. When revealed, attach this card to the prisoner. While this card is attached to the prisoner, they cannot uh, move or be moved by any hero card effects. Uh, and then we can choose one of these things, and if any of the tests pass, we can actually discard this card. So Hugh is going to be a little bit more nervous. Finally, we'll do our threat cards. Remember, we're doing threat plus one. So our first one is another fire spray. Okay, so fire spray for Baron since he opened the door. For me, we're going to have uh, another Bray Flame Shaper. And then for the third one, oh, we have Raging Fires. Each hero must place one threat token on their room's feature card. Now, that's our current room. That's the bookshelf. That's not the cage because we're in the, uh, the bookshelf room right now. I'll be placing two threat tokens here onto the bookshelf. It also says each hero with a copy of a fire spray in their threat area, that would be Berndt, must place one threat token on its room's feature card. So remember that cage we just drew? That cage will also have one threat token. Threat, consider threat in this scenario as fire, essentially. <laughs> oh, the bookshelf's on fire. That's not good. Then each character suffers one damage for each threat token on their room's feature card. So we have two threat tokens in the bookshelf's room, so both of us are going to suffer two damage. That's going to put me to five damage. Baron over here will have his first two points of damage. He'll have 10 health left. Now, something I didn't show you guys at the beginning, threat tokens. Threat tokens represent the raging fire the Bray leave in their wake. Once during your turn, a hero may discard one focus to test their intellect. For each success, the hero may discard one threat token from their room's feature card. At the end of each hero's turn, they suffer one damage for each threat token on their room's feature card. So that's why if we end our, room, our turn in the room with the cage, we're going to suffer one damage. Heck, if we ended our turn in the room with the bookshelf, we'd suffer two damage. But we can get rid of them by discarding a focus and testing our, uh, our intellect. We'll place that cage right here, and that fire spray is going to be placed right here, which is going to be essentially adjacent to Berndt. It's kind of tight in here. And then that fire, uh, that fire enemy over here is going to spawn in this spot, way back over here. And don't forget, she has one armor. The Bray thought they were pretty tricky by putting that fire spray right in front of you, but check it out. Again, we have that stern clairvoyance card, which I am able to play after the trap is placed on the board. Now I get to choose a hero within range to move up to three spaces, ignoring trigger effects, and then that hero may place two progress on an adjacent trap. So let's go ahead and do that. The Stern Clairvoyance allows me to choose either person. I know I said I put two progress on it, but I actually changed my mind. We actually are going to go ahead and move Colin's character, one, two, three, who now is still adjacent. So we do get to still put the two progress on the trap. I just wanted to be understand that we're actually using that character to do it instead of mine. Now, of course, the bottom of our text allows us to every hero, each hero within range gains one focus if I use that die. So Colin and I are both going to gain a focus token, and I'm going to go ahead and re-roll this altar die. Don't forget that although I cannot move diagonally through the door, this is still considered an, an adjacent uh, uh, an adjacent space. Technically, if I could attack, I could attack this uh, fire spray. So now we're going to go ahead and re-roll that altar die. And look, I got some water. Colin's a huge fan so of water. I am so happy with water. <laughs> Being that this is in our way, I'm going to go ahead and use my third action to use our intellect to try to get rid of this trap. I think that's our best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and roll them in there. I got a burst and an actual success. So we've gotten what we needed. Now we're just looking for maybe some focus. Oh, yeah, check it out. I get a focus for that as well. We successfully got rid of this fire spray, which means we do get to gain one supply. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to our other two, giving us a total of three. And now with my next action, well, actually, I'm out of actions. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use one of those melody tokens that Colin was so nice to give me to exhaust my character to allow me to move two spaces. And then I can attach a bounty card from my hand to an enemy within range. Well, there aren't going to be any in range, but I want to get out of this room because this thing is on fire and that is bad news. So I'm actually going to move into this room and then move another square over here. Now, as a non-action, I'm going to try to get rid of the fire that is on that cage. So we're going to go ahead and use one of our focus tokens and do an intellect test and see how this goes. Come on, we need at least one success. We got two successes and I'm probably going to get my focus token back. I don't see why not. The first action I'm going to take is moving into this room. I'll move one, two, and I think that's it. I'd love to move three, but of course, Baron's in the way. <laughs> so I'm going to move here for action one. 
I'm by the cage. I'm going to go ahead and hammer on the cage to try and distract that blasted flame shaper over there. So I'm going to interact with this. If you are in the same room as an enemy, you may task with your charisma to uh, distract the guards. I'm looking to get six successes. So normally I roll three dice. I'm going to discard one supply to roll four dice for this. Maybe I can even bang this out in one roll. I'll roll my four dice for this. And that's terrible. I'll have to use two focus to just even get four successes. Uh, do I want to do that? So that wasn't nearly as good as what I was hoping for. So instead, I'm going to use one focus. So I have three successes. That's three out of the six that I need. I'll then gain this focus back as well. I'm going to go ahead and then exhaust my loot. So this isn't an action to choose a hero within range to gain two focus. I'm going to choose myself. So I have four focus here. Hopefully that's going to make this a guarantee if I do this again. Oh, that's earth. That's awesome. So then I think for my final action, I am just going to try and distract the guards again. This is going to be a charisma test. I'm just going to roll three dice. I have four focus. Come on. Uh, we have one two more successes plus the three that are there that's not enough so i'll use one focus to get one two three successes and then i'll actually gain two focus back which gives me the max of five focus that i can have and that means distract the guards has been completed and we don't have to worry about a lurker card heck yeah i'm then going to exhaust my songs from home whole reason why I wanted to have this wind, I can place one melody token on a hero character card or an enemy card. So I will go ahead and give it to myself. That gives me three of those. I'll have to re-roll this wind and we get fire. Seriously, I had to roll the fire now. This will end the hero phase and both Barrett and I will draw one card. I get the battle hymn. And what do you get? I got marked prey. Oh, that's going to be so good. Wait till you see what this does. Before we move to the enemy phase, I'm actually, instead of giving this melody token to myself, I'm going to give it to the Bray Flame Shaper, so that way she does not activate her effect, because her effect is pretty terrible. So I'm going to give that to her. Moving into the threat phase, I'm the only one now with one of these cards, so I'm going to have to go ahead and test two. And if failed, I'm going to place one search token on the room's feature card. So we're going to go ahead and roll them up and hopefully get two successes. Oh, not only we get two successes, I got a focus token as well. Boom! Next, we're going to activate the Bray Flame Shaper. So it says here she's going to try and engage. She can move four spaces. She needs to be within range six. And then she's going to inflict a, an attack of six with an agility for defense. If unable, it will engage again and then inflict with willpower of four, then place one threat token on this room's feature card. And normally, because there is fire here in the altar pool, she would do this effect. Instead, we'll just discard the melody token. I love that. With a range of six, all she has to do is move up two spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. She definitely can see him. Even though he's trying to hide behind the cage, his sword is sticking out. She's going to go ahead and attack him, and, she, and he'll have to defend with his agility. Van Guys' agility is two, so we're going to roll up two dice. We got a burst and a success. That's fantastic. Keep this going. Okay, well, one burst is better than nothing. We got three successes, meaning we're going to block four, one for the armor that I automatically have, and our three successes. Now, remember, I've got a ton of armor tokens, so I'm going to soak up the last two damage with the armor tokens we have, leaving with only one armor token. But I've taken no damage. Morgan's going to go next. We're going to place one focused on a new mask card. We can't do that. Then we're each going to discard one focus token. That's going to put me down to four and Barrent down to three. There's no water in the altar pool. So then we're going to draw her next card and we have the new mask legacy. Place one focus on each new mask card. If no new mask card is in play, move the top new mask card in the villain discard pile to the villain play area. Ugh, we don't have any in the discard pile. We are super lucky with her. Usually those new mask cards can be a huge pain, but that's all she's going to do. We'll now move to the quest phase. Here we activate if we control the prisoner. We don't. Each hero may discard one focus to change an altar die. I'll go ahead and discard one focus, putting me down to three. I'm going to change that fire that we have over here. I'm going to change it over to a water because I like water much better. Uh, that means that now we have no fire in the pool, so this fire effect doesn't happen. And then we have the cage. A hero adjacent to this feature may reveal the top card of the threat deck and then place it on the top or the bottom of the deck. So our card here is another fire spray. Golly, those fire sprays. I think we definitely don't want it. Baron's shaking his head no. So we're going to place this on the bottom of the deck. That'll end round two. Let's start off with round three. And I feel like Baron's been doing great going first. So we'll have Baron go first again. Colin so graciously let me go first again. Oh, I love going first. I'm going to first off give him this potion healing because he was such a nice guy. This is going to allow me to choose a character within range to heal three damage. So I'm going to go ahead and heal him three. It's going to be fantastic. 
Now that is going to leave Colin with two damage on his character, but I think that's going to be a lot better than the five he originally had. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to interact with this cage, and we're going to use this search using my might. And it says here, if no figure is in the cage, choose a minion threat in this room. Place that figure in the cage and shuffle the threat card back into the threat deck. When this figure's card is drawn, this figure is spawned adjacent to this feature as close to as many heroes as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and throw him, this character into the cage and we're going to use one of these supplies to make it happen. Now, I do want to mention that this says minion threat, so that means you can only throw a minion threat, not a lurker, into the cage. You also, of course, can't throw the villain. <laughs> Good luck throwing the villain into the cage. They probably just burst out. So we're going to go ahead and roll our three dice for our search action. And we got one, two, three successes, and I could go ahead and use one of my focus tokens for a fourth success if I want to. And I think it will be wise to go ahead and use that focus token to get a fourth success. Now we're going to be able to put two progress on our actual Ultra Brown shard because that's the most I can do. So we're going to add those there. So the other one we're going to gain is our search card and then we're going to get a supply for the fourth success. So let's see what our search card is. We have found a potion of might. Oh, who would be more mightier than my horse? Before rolling dice, you for your test for might, I get to gain two more. Oh, that's going to be awesome. And now that we did search successfully we have to add another token to this to make it harder and of course we can't forget that von geyser has gone ahead and thrown the brave flame shaper into the actual cage goodbye we're going to shuffle this back into the deck so the coolest thing about this feature is we get to actually put the monster right inside check this out oh Oh, goodbye, Mr. Flame Shaper. All right, that's our first action. Now, of course, our second action is we're going to go ahead and move. And I'm allowed to move three squares. One, two, three, right down there. And we're going to open our next door. First thing we'll do is we'll draw our feature card. Oh, and we have found the altar. Next, we'll draw our quest card. And we have the guard room. The unassuming room opens up to what appears to be a guard room of sorts with an altar inside of it. Various weapons and armaments adorn the walls, their glory forgotten ages ago, but more than suitable for crude work. The door creaks loudly despite the most valiant efforts of subtlety, and the sounds of alarm are taken up in the deep shadows. You struggle to hear the concerned voices beyond, but all you can make out is a simple, INTRUDER! When revealed, if the prisoner's token is on the board, draw one lurker card and spawn it adjacent to the prisoner. Each enemy drawn when revealing this room gains two armor tokens. Then the active hero must test this. If failed, draw one villain card. So what this means for us is when we draw our threat cards, if we draw any minions, those minions are going to come out with plus two armor tokens, which means for us it's going to be three armor tokens. Then at the end of this, Baird is going to have to test uh, agility two. And if he fails, we're going to have to draw a villain card. So our first one is the Raging Fires. Each hero must place one threat token on this room's feature card. So that would be the cage because we're still in that room. And then it says uh, no one has a fire spray, so we don't have to worry about that. Then each character suffers one damage for each threat token on that room's feature card. That means we're each going to suffer two damage. That means Van Geyser will have four damage and I will have four damage. That's the first one. Great. Second one, we have Raging Fire. That's actually absolutely terrible. With this draw, it seems like the Flame Shaper is pretty pissed. She's placing two more threat tokens, you guys. That means four are now on the cage. Four threat tokens. That means we each suffer four more damage. That means we each have eight damage. <laughs> I am two away from being killed, which would mean we'd lose this scenario. Our third one is, oh, only a Bray Multanite with two armor. Going to come in with three armor tokens. Uh, wonderful, it's the blue one. That Multanite with three shield tokens and two armor <laughs> is going to spawn right here. And we have our really cool looking altar. We're going to place that right here. For my final action, I'm actually just going to go ahead and move. I know this seems really bad because we want to get to this guy and do some damage, but there's nothing I can do to actually get to him. So we're just going to go one, two, three and stand next to this altar. And I don't know. I hope he doesn't hit us too hard. Before he hits me though, check this out. I do have a feat card that I'm going to play. So let's go ahead and resolve this. Elder Grit is going to be what Von Geyser is going to do. Now this is a feat card, so it's not an action. And I'm going to be able to test my fortitude at three. If passed, I may heal one damage and gain one armor token. And if I do this with flame, I can heal another damage and gain an armor token. Now we don't have fire in the pool, but thanks to Colin's wonderful musical ability, I do have a token that I can use to give us this fire. 
Now, of course, Von Geyser's Fortitude is his best stat, so he's going to go ahead and roll the three dice, and he got exactly three successes, so we were able to pass, heal, and I'm going to gain an armor token. Now, of course, I'm also, like I said, going to use that wonderful musical ability and grab another armor token and heal myself two damage, leaving myself with only six total damage that I've taken. One thing we forgot to do, because there's so many moving parts in this game, is I do have to test two agility. So we're gonna go ahead and roll those up, and I got two successes, a burst is one of them. So we're gonna roll that die again, if I can get it in the thing. There we go, check it out. We got one, two, three, and we get two focus tokens for this. Oh my gosh, Colin, I'm rolling focus tokens again. I've got my max of five. First thing I'm going to do for my turn is play my Lingering Melody card. So it takes an action to play this on the board. Then I'm going to exhaust it. I'm going to use this water symbol to simply move one space. I could instead exhaust it to roll one Alter Die and gain one Melody token. I kind of preferred the movement this time. Then after that, after I've exhausted this, I am going to then use this to move up to two spaces and heal two damage. So this will heal two damage. I now only have six damage instead of eight, so I'm not too away from dying. But since I'm using the use effect, I have to discard this card. Remember, the use and the exhaust were not actions. The only action was to actually play this card out on the board. So I'm going to move a total of three spaces now and re-roll this die. I'll roll up this altar die, and it's a uh, shadow. I'll go ahead and move one, two, three for that was my first action. My second action, I'm going to simply move in here. One, two, three, moving right behind Berent. What I'm going to do next is use my exhaust effect here. I'm going to give up this melody token since we never seem to roll wind. And I'm going to place one melody token on a hero character card or an enemy. I'm going to give this to Berent. I want to heal it. Because then I'm going to play this one. Each hero, and this is a feat, so it's not an action. Each hero with a melody token heals one damage. So we're each going down. You have five damage, and I will have five damage. Beautiful. Then it says each enemy with a melody token. We don't have any of those. I'm not going to do the bottom of this one. Instead, I am then going to use my slingshot. I'm within range five, so I can attack with my agility. I am going to use one supply, so I'm rolling three dice for this, and then I'm going to use my other melody token, so I will have none left, to also deal one damage to an enemy within range. So that means that Moltenite will have one point of damage on him, five health remaining, and I'm going to roll three dice for this attack. Three dice for this attack, I'm just hoping to get rid of his armor, if I can. I've got one, two, I've got one burst here, let's roll that in, oh nice. One, two, three, four successes, he has three armor, and then two regular defense. So let me see if it's worth it. Looking here, it's totally not worth to spend the two focus because he's got two armor, two regular armor. So I got rid of these three. If I used two focus, all I do is hit his armor. Would do no damage to him. So instead, I'm going to gain those two focus. That's going to give me a total of five focus. And we each have five focus in total. That's pretty sweet. As usual, we forget to draw our cards at the end of our turns. So we're each going to draw a card. And I get the rousing finale. Oh, and I got well equipped. Oh, this is gonna be fantastic. This card gets to let me attack with both of my weapons, man. I'm gonna start by going ahead and testing our altar bound shard. I have to test my agility too. Let's see how it goes. I got, oh, I got a burst. I also got a success, a focus, and we also got another success. Now this was a burst and a focus, so I'm gonna go ahead and give me that back because I like that way better than what I had when I hit the die. One, two, three successes, and I'm gonna grab a focus token. Fantastic, altar bound shard has yet to hurt us. Now, of course, I forgot I actually have five already, so I can't gain any more focus, but of course, we still were able to appease our altar bound shard. The next card to activate is this Bray Multanite. It's going to engage, get within range two of Berent, hit him over the head with his huge axe. Fortunately, though, he is defending with his fortitude, which is three for him, and it's uh, an attack of five. And there's no fire in the altar pool, just because we haven't shown you guys the altar pool in a while. We've got two light, two earth, and a shadow. This Moltenite will move one, two. He's now within range two. Yeah, that axe definitely can reach Berent. Let's see the swing. Of course, our fortitude is three, so we're going to roll him up, and we got three successes. So that means we're actually going to go ahead and take two damage from this attack, which is okay because I got a ton of armor. We have one innate armor, and I have a whole bunch of tokens, so we're just going to take one armor token and remove it, and that's going to be the end of his attack. I'm not too worried about this guy. I think he put himself in a bad place. We'll move to the villain phase. Uh, there is no new card in play, so we're each going to discard one focus. That means we each have four. 
Then let's draw a Morgan card. And finally, we have a new mask card. This card can only have up to two focus on it. Each time a hero would gain one supply, that hero may instead discard one focus from this card. Remember, our total supply of focus is only 10. She's going to slowly try and take it away from us. We have an interact here. The hero may discard three, so six supply to discard this card. Wow, that's terrible. Finally, the quest phase. We can ignore this one. We still haven't found Hugh. He has been very hard to find. Then we go to the Scorch Altar. Each hero may discard one focus to change one altar die. I'm going to do that. I'm going to change this Earth over here to a Wind. I love that Wind. Uh, Baron's not going to do anything. And then we have each figure in the Altar's room must either discard one armor card uh, token or suffer one damage. Well, the nice thing is I have an armor. Baron has an armor, but I took out all the armor of that Multanite, so now he's going to have two damage. Take that. There's no fire, so we don't have to worry about this one. That will end the altar phase. And by the altar phase, I mean the quest phase. That'll end turn three. Let's move on to turn four, and let's see what Berent can do. Colin again has graciously let me go first, and we're going to start by going ahead and searching that altar with my Persistent Tracker. This is going to use my Fortitude, and when you may reveal the top card of the threat deck and then return it to either the top or bottom of the deck. So we're just going to go ahead and look at the top card of the threat deck, and it is a Brave Servant. I think I'm not too worried about the Brave Servant. What is it going to do? It's going to activate Engage Inflict Charisma 5 if unable to engage and place one threat token on this room's feature card. Again, I think this guy's okay. After resolving this top part, we are going to go ahead and deal with this, which is why the die is sitting here. I'm going to be able to attach this card to an enemy in your room. And after the attached enemy is defeated, which you better believe I should be able to kill this guy, we're going to gain an additional supply. I'm going to go ahead and use one of our supply, adding an extra die. So we're rolling four dice and the alder die all at one time. Boom, let's see what we did. Oh, we only got three. Oh, wow, that was absolutely a pretty terrible roll. We got three successes, and I can use a focus token. So we might as well, we've got a lot of them, to give ourselves four successes. Now, of course, what do you see in there? That's not good. You got it. The fire symbol. We're going to have to deal with that somehow. Now, the first thing we're going to do is get our search card. We have found... A potion of agility. It's very similar to our might potion. I'm going to be adding two dice when I do an agility test. Now with all these successes, four being exact, I'm also going to go ahead and place two of our progress on our altar bound shard, meaning there's four on there now. We only have to do two more to get rid of the card. I'm going to place a, the token on our actual feature, and we do get one supply for our fourth success. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and exhaust our character here, and we're going to use this melody token because there isn't any earth up in the actual pool. So I'm going to be able to move two spaces, and then you may attach a bounty card from your hand to the enemy within range. I'm not going to be doing the bounty card because I like all the cards I have, and I think we're going to be good enough to defeat this guy without that. But we're going to go ahead and discard our melody token. So we're going to go ahead and move those two spaces closer to the green room. For my second action, I'm going to go ahead and use my well-equipped card. I'm really excited for this card. It reminds me of my guy in Wizardry at the Blade Cuisinart. It says, resolve the action on your weapon card you control. Then you may move up to two spaces and resolve the action on your off-weapon card you control. Oh my gosh, it'll be so good. Two attacks in one turn. Our first attack is going to be done with Dawn's Edge, and I'm going to use our supply to give myself three dice. Let's see how this goes. We got one burst, one hit, and we also have got a focus. Let's see what else we get in this thing. Oh, we got three total successes and that focus token. Oh, you totally know I'm going to use the focus token. So he's done a total of four. He has two armor, so that's going to negate two of the attacks. We're going to do two damage to our Bray Moltonite. The next attack is going to be with Dustfall. That's going to be using our agility. So I'm only going to be rolling two dice. Let's see how this goes. I got one hit and we also got a focus token, which I think we're just going to go ahead and take the focus token because sadly he's got two armor, so he'd be actually able to soak up all the damage. But I've got bad news for this guy. We've got Dawn Edge and Dustfall, and I can exhaust both of these swords to go ahead and do a damage to him. Check it out. I can exhaust this die to deal one damage to an enemy within range and then change another altar die to a what darkness symbol that's fantastic i'm going to do that then the next one we're going to use is this one we're going to use that darkness symbol and we're going to deal one damage to an enemy within range and then change one of the other altar dice to a light 
With this two damage that he can't stop with his armor, that is going to defeat our Molten Knight, and we're going to gain two supply from that, one for killing him, and of course one from our persistent tracker that we had attached to him as well. So we're going to take those away. Now we do have to reroll some of these dice because of course we use them. We're going to roll these two and see what they turn into. Hopefully not fire. Oh no, there's fire again. In the middle of our well-equipped action, for recording purposes, we did all the rolling off and once, and now we're actually going to do the two movement. So we're going to move adjacent to him, and that's where we're going to make our second attack. That kills off our Bray Moltonite, but now, as a free action, kind of, I can go ahead and open the door to the green room. We'll start by drawing our feature card, and we have the alchemy desk. I want this desk! A hero adjacent to this feature may heal one damage. Sweet. Next, we'll draw our quest card, and we have the Turnkey's Chamber. By some stroke of luck, you have found the Turnkey's Chamber. The room is festooned with documents, maps, and keys, all at the desk, of course. All the information you could wish for during a rescue operation. When revealed, each hero may place one progress on an objective card in their threat area. So Barrett now has five on his instead of four. Each hero who does not have an objective card in their threat area may gain one focus and one supply. So now we'll have three supply and I have four focus. Then we can attach this card to this room's feature. So it's going to be attached to the desk. Once during their act phase, a hero in this room may discard one focus to either place one progress on an objective card in their threat area or heal one damage from the actual prisoner. Well, I think we know what Barrett's going to be doing. However, we're not done. We need to reveal three threat cards. Our first one, we know what it is, the Bray Servant. Our second one will be a uh, green Bray Moltonite. Remember, all of these will come in with one armor token. And our third one, we have three enemies, the Bray Flame sh uh, Shaper. We'll place that desk right here. Then we'll start with the small guy right here, followed by the big guy. i would probably put him here, right next to where Baird's going to come in. And the Flame Shaper would probably go behind. They just need to be adjacent to the spawn area. For my third and final action, we're going to go ahead and use our Road Warden card here. You may move up to two spaces and attack with Might. Then you may roll one Altar Die. We're probably not going to roll any Altar Dice. Then I can go ahead and use the Fire Die, which we have in the Altar Pool, to attach this card to an enemy in your room. And then each Agility or Intellect attack targeting that enemy gains plus one Die. Now, of course, when I move into the room, I'm going to be able to activate this card right here if I want to, where it says, during their act phase, a hero in this room may discard one focus to either place one progress on an objective in their threat area or heal one damage from the prisoner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and discard the focus to gain the progress. That gives us six. We have completed the Altar Bound Shroud, mainly thanks to the feature that is inside this room. Oh, so good. Ban Geyser is going to go ahead and move his two spaces, one through the door and then one next to the desk. And then he's going to make a crushing attack against that Bray Moltonite. When I said crushing attack, that is exactly what I'm going to do. I get two dice because of my might. Then I'm going to get two more because I've decided to use my potion of might, which gives me two more dice. I'm also going to go ahead and use a supply, giving me one more dice. And then we'll go ahead and roll the altar dice as well. Oh, look at this. A mountain of dice would be so much fun. Let's see how we do. We got one, two, three, four, and one of them is a burst. Let's see what else we get. We got another one. So we got a total of one, two, three, four. And I could go ahead and use my two focus to give us an extra two successes. So that brings our total success up to six. So he's got two armor here. So now he's down to four. He's going to use his armor token to three, which means we've done three damage to that Bray Moltonite, which isn't too bad. He's half dead. And now that we've completed our attack, we could go ahead and add this bounty to him because we decided that it's probably best to put on this character because Colin attacks with agility and he could probably be able to try to take this guy out. That's going to end my turn, which means I get to go ahead and draw a card. And we've got, oh, another War Road Warden card. That's amazing. First thing I'm going to do on my turn, use this wind, and I'm going to go ahead and exhaust myself the Song of Home so I can gain one melody token because I'm all out. I'll have to reroll that Alter Die, and of course I get a fire. I'm then going to spend two of my precious actions moving. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, to get over to here. With my third action, I'll go ahead and play my Battle Hymn. I wonder what that sounds like. I'm going to attack with my agility. That's going to give me a three attack. Normally it's two, but because of the bounty that's on the Molten Knight, it's three. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and discard this melody token so that I can add one die to this. So that's actually going to be four dice. And I'll use a supply. That means I'm rolling five dice on this attack. I'll roll five dice for this attack. Oh, look at that. I got one burst. Let me roll that in right here. I have one, two, oh, those are all successes. One, two, three, four, five, six. We only needed three plus two is five. So he's toast. That means we'll gain a supply back and he is off the board. So we have two supply. So then I'm going to use the wind here and exhaust this card to deal one damage to an enemy within range. My range is five, so I can hit anyone. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the Bray Servant so he has only five health remaining. I'll remove that Multanite from the board, and that's going to unfortunately end my turn. I'm then going to draw a card, and I have a feat, the Song of Vi uh, Violent Valor. We'll move to that threat phase. First, this Bray Servant is going to go and use this fire, and then the Bray Flame Shaper is going to go and use this fire. So let's read everything. This one's going to engage. Now you can see here his um, range is four. Uh, he's going to move up to five spaces. He's going to attack with Charisma as your defense. So we're actually going to have him attack me. We can do that because we're both two spaces away. Uh, we don't have to worry about the if unable. But he is going to place one threat token on this room's feature card. So that means the Alchemy uh, Desk has one threat token on it. Then the Flame Shaper is going to go. It's going to attack, uh, this one is also the same space spaces away, so it's going, going to attack Barrett. Uh, that one's hitting for six. And then here, each character suffers one damage for each threat token on their features card. So we're each going to take one damage. I'm going to do that now so we don't forget. We each have six points of damage. The Bray Servant will go first. He's going to move one, two, three, four, five, because he can move five spaces. He's still within range four of me. And then the Flame Shaper will also move one, two, three, four. She can only move four. She is within range of Baird. Let's do the attacks. I have one armor, and I'm rolling three dice for this. I'm also rolling the two altar dice. Let's see what we get. I got three successes. So that means with the three successes and the one armor, I'm only taking one damage. I'll take that. So I'm at seven damage. We now have shadow and wind in the altar pool. Being attacked with agility, I get to roll two dice and I got two successes. So I do have one innate armor. I do have an armor token and we have two successes. So that's really a total of four damage being mitigated against us. So we're actually gonna take two from this Flame Shaper 6 attack, which is gonna bring me up to five, six, seven, eight damage. Oh man, I'm only down to four health left. Next, we'll move to the villain phase. Place one focus on a new mass card. So this is coming from the supply. Now, the total amount of focus that's in the game is only nine instead of 10. This has no effect right now. Uh, it only has an effect if we want to interact. And remember, this is going to hold a max of two focus. There is no water in the altar pool. So then we'll just draw a card. And this one says each hero must either move one of their focus to a new mass card or resist fortitude five. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to move my focus. I do not want to do that resist five. Uh, each uh, focus gained during this test must be placed on a new mess card instead. Here's the thing. That new mess card now is completely full. So any of the focus that Berndt gets from this roll, because uh, I'm assuming you're going to resist. Yes, Berndt is going to resist. So because of that resist, he will not have to put any of that focus onto the new mess card. It's already full. Now I do have three fortitude, so we're going to go ahead and roll this up. And we got a total of one, two, three successes. And look at that, two of those are bursts. So we're going to go ahead and roll a couple more dice into the tray. Oh, this is so good. I get bursts everywhere. We're going to burst it up. Okay, I think we're going to be just fine, but let's go ahead and count this up. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we get a focus. Now, we discussed this, and we don't think we're actually supposed to gain some focus during this because, of course, we should be putting it on a Numis card. And technically, that's already full but I don't think we should be taking the focus because this is a test that's supposed to be taking our focus from us. Finally, the quest phase. Don't have to worry about this. We still don't control Hue. Uh, this one, each hero may discard one focus to change an altar die. We're not going to do that. There's no fire in the pool. And then for this one, a hero that's adjacent to this feature may heal a damage. That means Baron has one less damage. He has a total of seven damage on him. Okay, that's going to end this round. Let's move to the next one. Baron's going to go ahead and go first. However, I can still do exhaust actions. So I'm going to exhaust with this. Place one melody token on a hero character or an enemy card. I'm going to give Baron that melody token. Let's reroll this die. We'll give this die a roll and we roll the fire. 
Thanks to Colin's amazing role for fire, I'm going to go ahead and use Road Warden, which we've seen before. I'm going to be able to move two spaces and then use my might to attack. And then I can roll one altar die if I wish. And of course, I am going to use the fire to go ahead and attach this card to an enemy in your room. Now, each agility and intellect targeting the attached enemy gains plus one die. And what we're going to do is just move up one, two spaces so I can at least be able to attack these enemies. The Road Warden card allows us to reroll one Altered Eye if we want to, and I'm going to go ahead and grab our Light one, and I'm going to target the Bray Flame Shaper. With two Might and two Altered Dice, we got a total of one success, and I'm able to gain two of those Focus Tokens. So with that one success, all we're going to be able to do is take off the Defense Token. We're going to place our Road Warden's Bounty onto the Bray Servant. Before we do our next action, I'm actually going to go ahead and exhaust both of these swords because these are amazing. Dawn's Edge and Dust Fall are both going to exhaust. Now, when I do that, I have to exhaust this die to deal one damage to an enemy within range and then change one altar die to a shadow symbol. And of course, we're going to choose the fire because we don't like fire. Return to shadow. Then what we're going to do is we're going to exhaust our shadow die to go ahead and deal one damage to an enemy within range and then change another altar Alter die to our light. And I think we're going to go ahead and turn our earth to light. The two damage are going to go onto the Bray Servant, leaving him with only three damage left. And I think we're going to try to take him out. But before we do that, we have to go ahead and re roll the altar dice. Now let's go ahead and see what they turn into. Well, that's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> They're going to stay the same. So I'm going to put those aside and we're going to move into our next attack. I'm going to go ahead and attack the Bray Servant with our marked. Prey. Now this is where this guy really starts to shine. He's going to go ahead and attack with his Fortitude. And if this attack defeats an enemy with an attached bounty card, you may return the attached card to your hand. Oh, I so hope we take him out. I think to make sure we do that, we're going to go ahead and use a supply to gain four dice. Let's see how this goes. We got a total of one, two, three, four successes, and I can gain a focus token which I believe is going to be, oh no, I do have to actually spend the token. Because if we look at our evil, evil character here, he has a total of one armor, one armor here, and we he still has to take three damage. So to get all the damage we need, I have to use this focus token. And that'll be enough to take him out, so we're going to gain back this supply, and the attached bounty is going to be returned to my hand. For my final action, I'm going to go ahead and use Duskfall. Duskfall attacks with agility, so I'm going to go ahead and use our potion to give myself an extra two dice. We're going to be rolling four dice against our Bray Flame Shaper. Let's see how this goes. I got one, two, three, and four. We even got a burst symbol. That's fantastic. Come on, keep them. Oh, yes, more bursts. We love exploding dice. They're the best dice ever. One, two, three, four, five, and I could use a focus token if I want to for six, but I don't think so. I think it's better to actually gain these focus tokens at this point so instead we're just going to do five damage i know only five oh totally excited about that that leaves our flame shaper with only two health left hopefully colin can do two he is kind of small maybe he might do it and the last thing we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and exhaust van geyser himself to go ahead and move up to two spaces then i could attach a bounty card i'm not going to attach the bounty card because well we did an absolutely amazing job against the flame shaper and i'm sure colin will take him out but we are going to go ahead and roll the altar die and it's got to be a water that's fantastic that's one of colin's favorite colors now that it's my turn, first thing I'm going to do is exhaust this, use that die he just rolled to choose a hero within range to gain two focus. Baron is definitely within range five. He now has four focus. Let's roll this up. I got some light. With all the excitement, we did forget to move Baron two spaces. One, two, he's now one space away from the door. We can open this door uh, because there's nothing in this room already. We've already cleared it. So I'm just going to put the door there showing that we can move through there. So then my first action... I'm just going to move one, two, three adjacent to this table. Action two, I'm going to use my Willow's Slingshot, rolling two dice to attack that flame shooter. That's a burst. That's awesome. I'll roll another one in. Beautiful. I have one, two, three successes. I would gain a focus. Is there any focus left? Yes, there's one focus left. So I will have my fourth focus, and we're going to gain our third supply and take this Bray off the board. Now, something that we did forget. At the end of Barrett's turn, this desk had one threat token on it. That means he should have taken one damage, so he'll go down to eight points of damage. 
I'm then going to immediately try and get rid of that threat token by discarding one focus and I'll roll my intelligence stats. My intelligence stat is two. As long as I get one success, oh, I got one and I'm going to gain that focus back. So I'm back to having four. We're going to remove that one threat token from the desk. We're good to go. Then for my third and final action, I'm going to do the interact here on the alchemy desk. I'm going to search with my intellect, which is two. I'm then going to use one supply, so it's three. For each supply gained during this test, choose a character to, in this room to heal one damage. We're really looking for lots of bursts here. Burst, 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 burst. And no, we get three successes. I'm definitely going to use a focus for our fourth. First thing we get to do is draw a search card, and we get the potion of intellect, which will help our intellect if we want to use that. Then that was this one. We still have three successes. We'll gain three supply and we'll have three healing. I'm going to take two and Baron's going to take one. So Baron's going to go down to seven damage and I'll go down to five damage. Finally, we'll also place a search token on the desk. As usual, we forgot to draw cards at the end of our turns. I'm going to get the Song of Violent Valor. We've seen that and a Marked Prey. We move to the threat phase, but there's no threats on the board. So we're going to activate here, place one focus on the new mask card. If unable, uh, each hero has to discard one. This can only hold two, so we're each going to have to discard a focus token. I have two left, Barrett has three left. Then what we will do is draw a new card, and we have the Treachery of the, uh, the Vizier. This card can only hold two focus. Each time a hero would draw a card, they may instead discard one focus from this. You have to discard three random cards from your hand to discard this card. And it's going to start soaking up our, our focus like nobody's business. Finally, for our quest phase, we can ignore this. Each hero may discard one focus to change one of these dice. I don't think any of us are going to do that. And then finally, uh, a hero that's adjacent to the alchemy desk can heal one damage. I'm adjacent, so I'm going to go from five damage down to four. That'll end this turn. Let's move to the next one. Van Geyser is going to go ahead and charge into the next room. He's going to move action. One, two, three. And then at this point, I'm actually going to use the melody token that uh, Colin so graciously gave me. And we're going to exhaust our character to be able to move two spaces. So we're going to move one over to open that door. And then we're probably going to move into the room. But of course, that depends on what is actually in the room. So let's go ahead and find out. As usual, we'll start off with our feature card, and we have the Fungal Patch. So a hero adjacent to this feature may deal one damage to an enemy in this room, throwing fungal pieces at them, maybe. Uh, and then, of course, you can do your search. Next, we'll draw our quest card, and we have the cell. We found the cell, Bernd. As you open the door, you hear struggled breathing and the rattle of chains. A sour smell overwhelms you, accompanying the sight of a such poor accommodations. A shadowy figure is haunched nearby, working pitlessly against the chains that bind them. As the prisoner, or Hugh, is alerted of your presence, they look up and plead for your help. Another shadow in the room curses and then flees into the darkness, most likely to report your intrusion. There isn't much time to waste. It's time to escort Hugh out of their wretched holdings. When revealed, attach this card to this room's feature card. So he is, he's tied up to the fungal patch. I haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> uh, and then he, we're going to spawn him adjacent to this room's feature. Well, Baron and I are just realizing that if we draw the Raging Fires card, he may be in a heap of trouble because remember that cage has four threat tokens on it already. So we're going to see what happens. Uh, yeah, well, let's draw our first one. We have a Brea Flame Shaper. Is that the blue one? Is that the one that's hidden in the cage? We'll find out. Well, I think that's the one that's hidden in the cage. The one is going to break out and come at you from behind. That's terrible. Uh, our second one will be a Red Bray Servant. That'll be for me. And then our third one, we'll have the Flame Spray, because why not? Let's just make this more fun. Well, you all know how Barent and I play games. We were a little bit risky, and this might have been bad. The Fungal Patch will spawn right here. Hugh will show up right here, which is nice. At least he's close. We will have the Bray Servant spawn over here. We're going to have the Fire Spray right in front of the door, right next to Van Geyser. And then guess what? That is definitely the, uh, the Flame Shaper is the one inside of the cage. She's going to jump out and she can jump ad adjacent uh, to the cage. So that's, this is diagonally adjacent and as close to as many characters as possible. Yeah, she just showed up ready to attack Barrett. 
The second action for Van Geyser is we have to try to get rid of that fire spray that's standing in that room. We're going to use a supply giving us three dice for this willpower test. Let's go ahead and see what we get. We got one, two, three. That wasn't exactly what we were hoping for. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the focus token from our die roll and just do two progress on our fire spray. So sadly, that means we do have to use our third action. And our third action was going to be used for something else that was going to be way better than actually trying to get rid of the fire spray. But what we're going to do is roll up two dice and see what happens. We got a... <laughs> We got enough to be able to at least handle the fire spray. I'm going to go ahead and use our focus token to go ahead and get our two successes here. But then I'm going to gain my focus token back from that die, giving us the four we need to get rid of the fire spray. And now we're going to see what we can do after that. Now, these aren't actions. Thank goodness I'm going to be able to do some damage on my turn. I'm going to go ahead and we are going to exhaust both Dawn's Edge and Dusk Fall. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to exhaust this light to go ahead and deal one damage to an enemy within range. And then I'm going to be able to change another die to Shadow. I'm going to go ahead and change this light one to Shadow, which then I'm going to go ahead and use on Dusk Fall. We're going to exhaust that die and we're going to change a Shadow die back to light. So it really didn't change too many dice around, but you know, that's okay. We're still doing two damage. Since there's four threat tokens in our room on that cage, I'm going to go ahead and test our intellect by going and spending our focus so we can at least try to get rid of some of those. I'm also going to go ahead and roll those altar dice all at the same time. So we've got ourselves one, two successes, and I put fire in the pool. That roll at least gets rid of two of the threats on that feature, so I am still going to take two damage. Now, of course, that is going to come to the end of the turn, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw my card, and we have found... Oh, shared bounty, where have you been all my life? While Barrett's getting absolutely mutilated over there, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to brave the dark here, and I'm just going to do a search. Uh, it might be not exactly the most helpful, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So I'm going to search with my fortitude, which is only two, but I'm going to use a supply. It's a plus one. I don't get the plus one for this because I do not have melody tokens, unfortunately, but I wanted to play this because I can get rid of this fire. I can gain either one supply or one melody token. Definitely going to gain a melody token with that. Now, remember, we've already searched the alchemy desk one time, so I need two successes to even have a successful search here. We had a terrible roll there. We have only one success. We have more shadow, because why don't we have more shadow and light? I'm definitely going to use one focus to get the two successes. So the first one gets canceled out by that search token. The second one, I will get a search card. Come on, be something good. Blinding power. Exhaust a minion within range. This Beautiful. Literally beautiful. I will definitely be using that this turn. Uh, that will help Barrett out at least a little bit. And then, of course, I'm going to gain this focus back from this, uh, this focus die. And now I'm going to place the second uh, search token onto the alchemy desk. For my second action, I think I'm just going to move. I'm going to go one, two, and then three. And then for my third action... I'm going to use my Bury Loot here. I'm going to test my Charisma. I'm going to discard a Supply. We have three Supply left, so I'm going to roll four dice on this. For each success, I can place one Melody Token on an Enemy card or a Hero card, and I'm assuming it has to be within range five. I'll roll my four dice here, and I've got, ooh, I've got one uh, Bursting Success. Oh, that's terrible. I have three successes there. I think I'm going to use one Focus and then immediately gain it back with the other one. So that's going to give me one, two, three, four melody tokens. And like I said, I'll gain this back with this one. Now I have to decide who to give the melody tokens to. So I've decided to give two melody tokens to myself and two to Bernd. Then what I'm going to do is exhaust a water, but of course we never have water. All we have is light and shadow. So I'm going to use one of the, well, that's a focus token. <laughs> I'm going to use one of the melody tokens that I just earned. I'm going to choose a hero within range to gain two focus, and that is going to be Barrett. So Barrett's now going to have four focus. Next, I'm going to play the Song of Violent Valor. This is a feat, so I can do that even though all three of my actions have been used. Each hero with a melody token heals one damage. So uh, I'm going to go down to only three damage, and Barrett is going to go down to only eight damage. Wow, that still sucks. Uh, then, because I have a melody token that I'm going to use, each hero may either gain one melody token or discard one melody token to attack using their might, targeting an enemy adjacent to them. So I can't do that. I can just gain this melody token back because of this, but Berndt is planning on using his melody token, one of his two, so that he can then do the attack of two on the Flame Shaper. 
Thank you so much, Colin, for letting me go ahead and attack. I'm going to use one of our supply to do it, too. So we're going to roll three dice. Come on, big money. Oh, look at that. We got one, two, three, and I can spend a focus token for four. I was really hoping for some bursting dice, but that's okay. We did get four actual successes, so that's going to mean she's going to take three damage, and she's going to lose this armor token. I was really hoping we'd be able to take out that flame shaper. Wasn't able to. I'm going to blame Barrett on that one. Uh, so instead, I'm going to use this. So there's an exhaust and a use. I'm not going to use the exhaust. I'm just going to use the use effect and then discard it. She's within range five of me, and I'm going to exhaust her card. This means she will not activate, so it'll protect Barrett at least a little bit. Final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to discard this focus, and I'm going to do this test as well, trying to get rid of the remaining two threat that's on the cage card. I roll two for my intellect test. Just need two successes here, and I've got one with one focus. That's perfect. I'll use my other focus to get my second success. That will remove all of the threat from the cage. We've gotten rid of all that fire. Uh, and then I'm going to end my turn simply by drawing a card, and I have the lingering melody. We're going to move to the threat phase. Currently, we have two threats on the board, but remember, we exhausted the Flame Shaper, so she's not going to do anything. The Bray Servant, though, is going to engage and try and attack uh, using Charisma as defense for five. Unfortunately, that's going to go towards Barrett. The Bray Servant simply needs to move one space up. One, two, three, four. Remember, they can see through the door just to this space, so he can see uh, Barrett here, and he's going to attack him for five. Sadly, Van Geyser's worst stat is Charisma, so he only gets one die, so of course we are going to decide to use one of these because, oh man, we're on the ropes. We didn't have exactly the greatest turn. We're going to roll these up and hopefully defend. Oh, we got a burst. That's what we need to see. We need more bursts. Okay, well, that's we got one, two, three. That's pretty good because I have to spend these focus tokens. So we're going to spend that to get three successes, meaning I'm only going to take two damage, but I do have one innate defense, so I'm only going to take one. Oof, we came out of this, I think, a little bit better than I thought. Next, we'll move to the villain phase. We have activate. Place one focus on a new masked card. We can do that. That's from the supply. We have four or five in the supply left. No water in the pool. All there is is light and shadow. Thanks, Barrett. Uh, these ones won't do anything, so let's go ahead and draw our next card. And we have the new masked legacy. Place one focus on each new masked card. If no new masked card is in play, move the top new masked card into play and place one focus on it. Don't have to worry about that. Can't place a focus here, but I'll have to place a second focus on that card. Our next step is the quest phase. This one, nobody controls Hugh yet. That's hopefully gonna happen soon. And then for our Scorched Altar, each hero may discard one focus. Definitely don't wanna do that. We're not in the altar's room. There's no fire in the pool and no one is adjacent to any of the other features. That will end our quest phase. Let's move to the next turn. Van Geyser's going to go ahead and go first. This seems to be a reoccurring theme in the game, but you know, when you're a big giant horse, you always like to get in the forefront of everything. The first thing we're going to do is use every single altar dice we have, <laughs> because we can. I'm going to go ahead and exhaust, or I'm going to play this card, which is an action and it's ongoing. So that means we're going to have to use our first action to do this, but that's okay. This is going to be placed out on the board. I can go ahead and use it if I want to, but I'm not. I'm just going to go ahead and exhaust this light to attach a discounted Barty card to an enemy within range and our flame shaper is in range i'm going to attach persistent tracker to her which allows her to give us an extra supply if she is defeated and spoiler alert she's not going to be around for long so we're going to go ahead and attach this to her and then i'm going to go ahead and exhaust both dawn's edge and dusk fall these are both going to do one damage to this enemy bring it to seven she's going to go ahead and die giving us two supply which is awesome now doing that i have to go ahead and exhaust a light die and turn one of the dice to a shadow die so we're going to go ahead and turn this to shadow and then this one makes me take a shadow die and exhaust it and turn this one to light so that's pretty funny so we're going to go ahead and roll these three dice in the altar pool and we've gone ahead and taken out our brave flame shaper we're going to roll these up and hopefully not get fire we got two earth and a wind i know colin's going to like that wind Van Geyser is a token mess, and he's going to go ahead and exhaust himself using this die to allow himself to move two spaces and then attach a bounty card from my hand to an enemy within range. We're not probably going to do the bounty part, but I am going to do the two movement, and I really wish I had less of those tokens on me. Rerolling that altar die, we turn it into another light! Yes! Van Geyser is going to go ahead and move his two spaces closer into the room. There's a couple cards attached to Hugh. We're going to go ahead and resolve these the best we can. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and test 
my fortitude here. And if we pass that test, I'm gonna use my second action to go ahead and interact test three. And if we pass, we can discard this card and gain control of the prisoner. Let's see if Van Geyser can endure the prisoner's panicked flailings. I sure hope he can. He's a horse that's three times as tall as this guy. Let's see how we do here. Oh, check that out. He's not only going to endure it, he's going to burst it. Let's see here. Oh, we're bursting straight through this guy. Oh, yeah, we endured everything. He can pound on us as much as he want. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. Now let's go ahead and see if we can test our other one, which is going to be agility. Now this one, I need to roll three successes, and I only have two. So we are going to go ahead and use a supply, which we could have kept that die. We're going to roll these up and see what happens to us. We got a total of one, two, and again, we're bursting. All right, that's three, and I'm gonna gain a focus token for this. And we have been able to discard the card, and now we have gained control of Hugh, who has one damage on him, we have to remember that. And we're not sure if it's actually pronounced Hugh, but I'm a huge Star Trek fan, I convinced uh, Colin here that uh, that's actually pronounced Hugh, kind of like that Borg. Now that we have control of Hugh, I'm gonna go ahead and exhaust him. And that allows us to move him four spaces. And then we can either attack with intellect, which is not gonna happen. And we're gonna go ahead and instead roll two altar dice. And Colin is not a fan of shadow and light as much as I am. So we're gonna go ahead and roll these. Exhausting Hugh gives us four movement and we're gonna run to the altar as fast as we can. Well, actually it's kind of an old guy. It's probably just kind of well, moving as fast as he can. With my last action, we're going to go ahead and search our fungal patch. We're going to interact with it using fortitude, which again is our best stat. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to use one of our supply, giving us four dice. Let's roll them up. We got a total of one, two, and a burst. So we're going to burst that die. And we got three successes, a burst, which is another success. And I could go ahead and use my focus token to give us Five successes. Oh my gosh, that's an amazing roll. We're going to first use our first success to gain a search card. And our search card is a potion of healing. Oh, where were you a couple turns ago? But that's okay. We survived at least. Maybe I might even use it now. We'll see. Then, of course, we get a ton of supply from this. We're going to go ahead and gain three supply plus the one in here. So we've got four supply coming from this. Wow, those mushrooms. We just totally reaped the rewards. Now the bottom of the fungal patch card does of course say that for each supply we gain during this test, we're gonna deal one damage to an enemy in this room, meaning we are actually going to hit that servant for four damage. And of course, we're gonna place our search token on the feature, making it a little bit tougher next time. That's gonna end Van Geyser's turn and we're gonna gain a card, Discerning the Prey. First thing I'm going to do for my turn is play this feat card. I'm just going to do the top action. Each hero with a melody token heals one damage. So each of us will heal one damage. That will put Van Geyser down to eight damage, and I'll only have a measly two. For my first action, I'm going to go ahead and move one, two, and three. Moving here, I'm adjacent to the fungal patch, but I'm also the same distance away from this servant. That way, if we do get attacked, he can attack me because my charisma is so much better than someone over there. Uh, so then what I'm going to do for my second two actions is I'm going to try and do an interact. My fortitude is two, so I'll roll two dice. I have two successes. One's canceled from this. The second one, we get to gain a search card, and I have a potion of willpower, so I can increase my willpower for that. I'm then going to drop a second search token on here. And then for my third action, why the heck not? I'm going to just roll these two. Let's see what we can find. I have two successes. I didn't get to do anything here. I should also mention, oh no, I didn't get to do any damage to him either because I didn't gain any supply. So that'll be all three of my actions. I'll go ahead and draw a card and I have the Verse of Diversion. Ooh, this one is a cool one. We're going to move to that threat phase. The only threat we have out is that servant. He's going to attack me. I'm at one, two, three, at one, two, three. So actually he can move one space away. One, two, three, four. Uh, he can probably move one more. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yep, there we go. He is within range four of me. He can attack me and I can roll for my charisma as defense. He's attacking me for five damage. I'll roll these three up. I've got one burst. That's nice. I'll roll this in. I have one, two, three, four blocks. Plus I have one armor for five. Totally blocked that. I'll also gain one focus. We'll move to the villain phase. We'll have activate, place one threat or one focus on a new mask card. We can't because both of them are full. So we're each going to discard one focus. Barrett now has one and I have none. We're then going to draw her next card. She has Lust for Laoon. This card can only have two focus on it. Each time a hero searches, they may spend one success to discard one focus from this card. Then if no focus remain on this card, the hero may discard one search card to discard this card. Hmm. 
so it's just another one of hers that's out on the board. Finally, we'll move to the quest phase and get this. If a hero controls hue, each hero with no minion in their threat area draws one threat card. Berndt took out his threat, so he has to draw a new one, and he's going to grab the Raging Fires card. Each hero must place one threat token on their room's feature card. That is going to be the fungal patch. So we're going to place two threat tokens, two threat tokens on the fungal patch, and then we're each going to suffer two damage. So that means Berndt has eight right now. He's going to go to 10 damage out of 12, and I'll go to four damage out of 10. Okay, that's not a problem. No one has one of the um, fire sprays, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we've done this one. Uh, we can do this one. Each hero may discard one focus. We're not going to do that. There's no fire in the pool. And then we have this one. A hero adjacent to this feature may deal one damage to an enemy in this room. Will deal one damage to that Bray Servant. He has five damage. He only has one health left. That will end this turn. I think we can do it this next turn before Morgan even comes out. Awesome. Van Geyser is going to go ahead and start. We're going to go ahead and search this fungal patch. I am going to use one of my supply, giving us a total of four dice. Come on, we need a good roll in here. And I got one, two, three with two bursts. This is going to be fantastic. All right, we got one, two, three, four successes. And I could go ahead and use this focus token for a fifth success, which means we've gone over the search token limit by three. Our first one is of course going to be a search card and we have found a potion of charisma. Ah, that's how I become more charming. And the next thing we get to do is grab some supply. We're gonna gain two more supply because of course we're over this by three. Two of them is gonna turn into supply. I've got one right here and we're gonna gain another one, which is gonna give us a total of six total supply. Now, of course, gaining those supplies also is gonna deal damage to that Bray Servant. And the poor Bray Servant doesn't have enough to be able to withstand this attack. So the mushrooms that we have searched has apparently put spores all through the room and he has died from inhaling too many spores. And he is going to give us a supply as well. Now we're going to go ahead and see if we can make it out of here with the prisoner. We're first going to exhaust Hugh and he's going to move his speed value of four. One, two, three, and four up next to that altar. Now I have to be adjacent to that altar as well as Hugh. So I'm going to use my second action to move one, two, three, and then we use my next action to move one, two, three. Oh, I'm one square away. What are we going to do about that? I've got a plan. We're going to go ahead and exhaust that die to give myself that two movement and ta-da, we were victorious. We saved the prisoner. Let's just check them to make sure we are right. It says if a hero controls hue and its miniature is adjacent to the altar and at least one hero with no enemies in the room, then we win. And that is the deal. We have won. Let's go ahead and look at the campaign upkeep here. Now, there is an FAQ, so let's actually check that out instead. It states here on page 379 and 11, replace the text in this text box directly under the campaign upkeep with the following. Each hero heals all damage, discards all focus, discards all threat tokens, discards all armor, to armor tokens. I'm going to say it's also discarding all of our melody tokens. And we're going to discard all the search cards that we found. Then for every three supply the party has, they may reveal one random equipment card. Then each hero may choose one revealed equipment card to add to the journal, which means that anybody can use it in another round as long as you have the space to do it. We have a total of seven supply. That means I'm going to be able to reveal two equipment cards. Thank you, Bert. That means we're just going to add both of these to the journal. Let's see what we get. We have the Ancient Relic. Your Inflict and Resist Tets for Willpower gain plus one. And you can exhaust light during your, uh, your Willpower test to gain plus one die. Cool. And our other one is going to be an Enchanted Cloak. Add your Charisma to your health value. I like that. Exhaust water to gain one armor token. Cool. If the heroes won the quest, we can read the following. What would my life be like without heroes to come and save me whenever I get myself into trouble? The old man laughs, <laughs> oddly, calmly, as he steps out from behind a pile of artfully stacked debris. Clad in a long yellow robe that only adds to the paleness of his elderly human skin, his wrinkled hands smoothing the gnarls in his ashen beard. Oh, where are my manners, he gasps. While I've held many titles and have been called many things, he bows, you may call me Hugh. Each hero adds one random hero upgrade card belonging to their hero uh, to the journal. I'll show you that. We're going to add Hugh to the journey, journal, then go to 16. Something else we're going to do is even though we didn't lose the quest, we're going to add one random enemy upgrade to the journal. So the one I picked is the Dark Resilience. So now 
each minion's gonna have plus one health, and then each villain will have plus two health. We each grabbed one random upgrade card. I've gotten battle him, and Baron has well equipped. I had stopped here for a quick overnight on my way up to the spire, Hugh explains, as you work your way out of the cellar rooms and to the ground floor, stopping for a moment to scoop up a half-split crock of rum from a leaning table and throws back a deep drink. Spitting out a small shard of fired clay, the old man heads straight out into the afternoon air. Those things have been on my tail since before Grunick, but I thought the old wards here would keep them out. He rubs the back of his neck and tosses the empty jug aside. Obviously, too many of the altars are awake, he chuckles half to himself, or Arkenhold is all full up and the bars are just getting rattled. We can either ask him about the altars, ask him about Arkenhold, or just let him ramble. I am all for letting him ramble. The Arkenspire, you know, was where Queen Valerie, just a bedamned lady at the point in her life, allowed the sacrifice of her one true love. It was no secret that the Lich Queen, Sarah, was using the Arkenspire to fuel her undying armies through her favorite puppet, Nlorik. Lady Valerie and her betrothed, Sir Ellen Thorne, led a small band of heroes into the Arkenspire, and only Lady Valerie ever emerged, but did so in bittersweet victory. Hugh sniffles, his eyes glassy with tears as if his own story was tugging at his heart. We can now choose the following, either ask more about Lady Valerie, ask about Sir Ellen Thorne, or just let him continue. At this point, let's let him continue. With the mortal worlds in Loric's vile clutches and the imprisoned Sarah impotent from within the Arkenhold, the Dreadlord was too preoccupied to see the hero's approach or the arrival of Sarah's one and true son, the magnanimous godling Kretch. It was actually Kretch that made the deal to inhabit Thorn's body and wield Valerie's legendary blade to destroy Loric. The vampiric traitor Morse Bolton would take the remains and keep them from falling back into Sarah's agent's hands, but it was Kretch's brilliant plan and the two lovers' sacrifice that actually toppled Loric's vile rule. Each hero now must test their intellect 3. If at least one hero passes, go to 023, otherwise continue to chapter 2. Well, we're both at intellect two, and we have no focus. We had to discard it, so it's just going to be whatever we roll. First roll will be for Berndt. He usually gets the burst. He got a burst. Come on, come on. That's three. Beautiful. Let's just see if I would have succeeded. <laughs> it's always fun to see. Nope, I would have gotten one success. Typical. Catching a brief pause in Hugh's tale, you interject about Kretsch throwing the realm into chaos by trying to free Sarah from the Arkenhold, reminding Hugh that the magnanimous and brilliant Kretsch was still a trickster demigod and was thwarted by Queen Valerie only 15 years ago. Hugh nods in agreement, deep furrows crossing his brow nonetheless. Well, yeah, he huffs. He had a few bad days afterward, but who wouldn't want to try and free their mother from an otherworldly hell? Seeing that he isn't going to get the rousing support he wants, he folds his arms and nods to the horizon. We should pick up the pace and get to shelter before nightfall. There's no telling what might be out here now the altars are awake. And that should complete chapter one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Barrett and I had a blast recording it. It's always great to play with Barrett. <laughs> so much fun. And this game, I mean, I, I don't know about you if you're playing it. I have felt like it's a tad bit on the easier side. The heroes are super strong. So adding that one additional threat card and having one enemy upgrade when you first start, it really... It has sung for us at that level. I've played now, I think, three times that way. And it is every time it's come down, it's been much closer of a game. I mean, had, uh, Baron had, what, only one or two health left at the end? Yeah, super good. So uh, check that out if you want to try that for your game. Uh, we'll be doing Chapter 2 within the next two weeks. Hope you guys uh, will join us there. We'll catch you at the next stop.